Scylla is known as a sea monster who scared the ancient Greeks as they went through a tight maritime strait. Despite her beginnings as a lovely nymph, she devoured countless sailors and drove many ships into the sea. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a brand new video on the channel. Today, we are going to talk about the mythos and origin of Scylla. Before we get started with the video, don't forget to smash the like button, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get started. Scylla in the Odyssey Scylla is well known to many because of her role in one of the most famous works of Greek literature. Scylla is one of the numerous dangers that the legendary hero Odysseus experiences on his trip home from the Trojan War, according to Homer's Odyssey. Odysseus had been told that his participation in the war would mean he would not see his home for another 20 years. Despite his best efforts to avoid departing for Troy, he was unable to escape his obligations as a Greek monarch. Odysseus, like the rest of the fatigued Greek army, was eager to return to his homeland after the Ten-Year War. He had left behind his wife and baby, hoping to see them soon despite the prophecy. He made the grave blunder, however, of infuriating one of Olympus's most powerful gods. He had wrongfully blinded one of Poseidon's sons, the Cyclops Polyphemus, and boasted about it. The deity of the sea used every opportunity to exact vengeance on Odysseus for this transgression. Even individuals who had not personally offended the god who ruled over the sea faced several hazards. The two deadly marine animals dwelt on opposite sides of a short tract of water known to historians as the Hazardous Strait of Messina, which connects southern Italy and Sicily. Sailors would have to select which of the horrors to avoid in order to navigate the strait. Odysseus encounters this decision in the Odyssey when he leaves Circe's island to continue his journey. The Enchantress urges him to approach Scylla first because she is the less deadly of the two creatures. Scylla attacked ships by snapping at them and removing a few sailors at a time. Charybdis was a massive whirlpool. Circe warned Odysseus that Scylla posed less of a threat to his ship if he could sail by her swiftly. She might be able to take a few of his men, but that was preferable to losing his entire ship to Charybdis. His first inclination was to attack the beast, but Circe warned him that doing so would be suicidal. Scylla couldn't be killed, and any stop near her would allow her to seize more of his troops. Circe also advised the hero to seek help from Scylla's mother, a river nymph in Homer's story. The nymph might persuade the monster to just attack the ship once, minimizing the losses. Odysseus took this advice and, when his ship approached the waterway, stayed close to the rocks where Scylla lived. He wore strong armor but no weapons, remembering Circe's warning against fighting. He also failed to warn his men about the impending monster. He was concerned that if they had known the danger, they would have tried to hide rather than row fast. The ship had almost passed by safely until his crew was distracted by neighboring Cherubitis and lost focus. Scylla took advantage of the situation, seizing six members of Odysseus's crew. She devoured the poor men while the rest of the crew looked on in despair. The ship sailed away before she could claim any more of Odysseus's men. Despite losing six lives to the monster, the majority of the crew made it safely through the strait. The Voyage of the Argonauts Scylla also figured in the account of another renowned Greek ship. The creature was also seen by Jason and the Argonauts, the crew of the ship Argo. Argo's voyage matches Odysseus's in many ways. Homer's works influenced other writers and set the norm for the dangers that a hero would endure while traveling through the Mediterranean. Jason, like Odysseus, went past the sirens before arriving at the narrow strait where Scylla and Charybdis awaited. While Odysseus sought advice from a witch, Jason enlisted the help of a divinity. Hera had been his patroness, and she understood the dangers that lay in the strait as well as Circe. She asked for help in ensuring that none of the Argonauts fell prey to the monsters. Hera asked the Tissus, a sea goddess, to assist her in guiding the Argo across the treacherous waters. While Odysseus's men had to navigate their way around the monsters on their own, Vetus was in charge of the Argonauts' navigation. Jason's ship was able to perfectly navigate the center of the strait thanks to the assistance of a goddess. They kept just beyond Scylla and Charybdis's reach. The Argo cruised down the center of the canal, a fraction of an inch from danger on each side on each side. Any human would have found it difficult to steer. In Virgil's Aeneid, the Roman cultural hero adopts a very different approach. Rather than risk the treacherous strait, 
he takes a far longer route around the southern border of Sicily to completely escape the monster. She had six lengthy heads, according to Homer, with which she struck out to catch passing sea creatures and humans alike. No one had ever passed her without losing a man. She was described as partly human, as are many fabled monster. Her upper body was described as looking like a woman, while her lower body was described as more resembling a sea monster. Virgil claimed that her tail resembled that of a dolphin and her belly that of a wolverine. The six heads described by Homer were ultimately determined to be canines. In Greek mythology, dogs were frequently connected with underworld creatures and Scylla's ring of dog heads around her waist resembled Typhon, the fabled giant who fought Zeus. Scylla's name suggests both her initial inspiration and her later depiction. It is said to be derived from two Greek terms. Scylleros was the Greek term for a hermit crab, and Scylla's projecting legs were almost certainly inspired by them. Skylo, a verb that means to rend, is also similar to her given name. However, another closely related word was Skylix. The similar sound of Scylla, a term for both a dog and a sort of shark, may have encouraged poets and artists to depict Scylla with dog heads and legs. Scylla fits many of the traditional monster stereotypes in Greek mythology. She was partly human, with several heads, a serpentine tail, and canine traits. While her form was inspired by a little, innocuous creature at first, the description evolved through time to fit the type of monster the Greeks anticipated their heroes would meet. The Story of a Monster While Scylla's looks were depicted in graphic detail, her origins were never made explicit. Monsters in Greek mythology did not necessarily have a backstory. They were generally used to relate them to other myths. As a result, the monster's backgrounds were frequently varied. Scylla was no exception. There were numerous accounts of how the monster came to be, each of which linked her to a different legend. Many monsters had significantly more elaborate origin stories by the classical period and throughout the Roman era than those commonly given in earlier Greek works. A lovely young woman is frequently transformed by a jealous or angry deity. Scylla's story was no exception. Ovid described her as a river nymph in his Metamorphosis. Scylla was adored by many men and gods, but she spurned them all. She eventually drew the interest of the seagull Glaucus, but he too turned her down. Glaucus was enraged that Scylla had rejected him, so he sought the assistance of the legendary witch Cersa to win Scylla's love. Cersa, on the other hand, declared her own love for the god. She persuaded him to abandon his unrequited love for the nymph in order to be with her. Glaucus, however, was unaffected by the enchantress's plea and vowed that he would never love another lady as long as Scylla lived. Circe was furious. She loved Glaucus too much to injure him, so she took her rage out on Scylla. Circe cast a deformant spell on the nymph with her magic. Scylla mutated into a monster when she waded along the sea's edge. Scylla didn't understand that the gigantic dog heads ringing her waist were a part of her own body until she peered down. She fled, believing she was being attacked by a monster. When she arrived at the cave in the narrow strait, she discovered she wasn't being attacked by a monster but was turning into one herself. She remained there indefinitely. Circe's brutality, however, had not won Glaucus's heart. Scylla's beauty was grieved by the divine. Scylla swore to take any opportunity she had to exact revenge on Circe. When Odysseus, or Ulysses, departed Circe's island, Scylla attacked his ship because the witch had fallen in love with the mortal man. Scylla and Charybdis Scylla is one of Greek mythology's most well-known and recognized monsters, particularly among those associated with the sea. Our understanding of mythology, like that of ancient writers, is so heavily inspired by Homer that her inclusion in the Odyssey ensured she remained in the popular imagination. Odysseus chose to go through Scylla in order to reduce his losses. However, later in the myth, Odysseus was the only one who had to travel past Charybdis. Aeneas dodged the decision by taking the longer route. Only through supernatural intervention was Jason able to successfully transit the strait. Scylla and Charybdis were the fates of three of the ancient world's most famous seamen. That's a wrap on the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.